Um, I want to give you a short presentation about the results of the feasibility study on the Chigos Batal. And I have divided my study into four major steps. The first one deals with the collection of information and the survey, which have already been presented by Martin. And as a next step, a list of geodetic data products and their available metadata, especially from the EIG services, was created. And then, based on the community survey, a requirements profile um, regarding to the functionalities and user friendliness of the software packages was created. And um, this leads me to my last and most important point of this presentation, um, the tests of the software packages. Um, one very important function is the metadata harvesting function. And um, I want to get more in detail later. Um, to carry these tests out, um, a virtual server was set up and the software packages were installed using Docker images. Um, but now let's look at these um, packages in detail. There are two possible open source packages, um, GeoNetwork and Seacan. And as you can see in this excerpt of the requirements profile, um, it is obviously that some important harvesting functions are not feasible when using CCAN. And furthermore, there are a lot of functions um, only possible after installing some extensions or additional software packages in CCAN. And yes, that's not, not so good. Um, based on this research, um, we have put the focus on GeoNetwork and have done most of the tests in, in this software. And yes, um, one big advantage of GeoNetwork is that there are a lot of um, built-in functions to harvest geospatial metadata. And the software is very well es established and maintained. And there are a lot of continuous further developments, like the two extension packages, GeoNetwork UI and microservices. Um, they offer a good opportunity to um, improve the functionalities in the base package GeoNetwork Core, which also runs independently. Um, in contrast to this, um, there are many extensions in Secant which are partly outdated or no longer maintained, and that's um, a reason why Secant is not that good for us. Um, now I will come to the already mentioned harvesting method, which allows us to synchronize a large amount of, amount of metadata automatically. And I will explain it um, with the interface of GeoNetwork. And um, at the configuration of the harvesting method, the server URL or the path to the directory is very important. And after finishing the harvesting run, the results, including the total number, the unchanged and updated entries, are clearly, clearly presented at this table, which you can see on the right side of the slide. And now I will get a little bit more in detail. And this overview shows the import and export functionalities of GeoNetwork. In the middle, and in pink and gray, you can see the um, different harvesting, harvesting methods. And on the left side, in purple, are listed the possible data sources, how geodetic metadata can be provided. And, um, in general, it can be said that it's very important to um, support the metadata in a machine-readable format. And I will start with the first tested harvester, the GeoNetwork harvester, um, which accesses um, a GeoNetwork server via an URL. And um, 
at this server, at this GU network server, the, the GU network standard is, of course, available and the formats fit well together and this allows us an error-free import. In the other cases below, um, the harvesting process is a little bit more complex and I will get more in detail in this transformation step in the Turkish box on the next slide. But now I will come to the second harvester and um, metadata can also be collected through an OIE protocol of metadata harvesting. And if such an OIE um, interface is available, this is also a very good option to harvest metadata. Um, if the metadata is provided in a suitable JSON format, um, it can be simply collected by specifying the URL of the server. And the last harvesting method is the local file system harvester. And in this case, after downloading the XML files, they um, to the to the local Chigos portal server. They can um, easily import it by specifying the directory path of the downloaded XML files. And um, in the future, it could be um, the download step could be automated, for example, by a Python script or so. Um, in gray, in the middle, you can see other supported harvesting methods in GeoNetwork, but as far as we know, there are no um, geodetic metadata available over these interfaces, and in my study, I focused um, the pink harvester. Um, but now I will come to the already mentioned transformation um, step or process. There are three uh, metadata, metadata standards available in GeoNetwork, um, like the two geographic markup languages and Dublin Core. And um, we made the best experience with the geographic markup languages and we'll focus on them. Um, yes, um, if a metadata record is not available in one of these two ISO standards, uh, tr or only as a JSON file, a transformation with an XSL file is necessary. And um, some or, the, uh, or many of these XSL files already integrated in GeoNetwork, but um, there are a lot of a lot of metadata, metadata standards which um, does not provide such XSL files like GeoAuder CML or Datasite. Um, yes, um, in order to import this metadata anyway to GeoNetwork, it must either be um, provided in a suitable or in a correct standard or the transformation file must be created or the last option is to import the whole defini definition of a metadata schema. And um, such a definition includes a variety of different files in different formats. And um, this important files uh, in combination with the um, corresponding folder structure is necessary to import it properly and to use it in the portal. Um, now, after a successful transformation or import to GeoNetwork, the metadata appears there and can be downloaded as an XML, PDF, or a, or a zip file. And um, now um, I will show you how this look, look, may look like in the Chigos portal. Here we have an overview page where you can um, search for a specific data set or set several filters like a um, spatial filter on an interactive map or a temporal filter. And if we have found our, our chosen um, data set 
for example, this one from the Austrian GUID. We are taken to a more detailed description. Here you can see the title, the description of the content, the spatial extent um, shown on a map, as well as some important technical information like the date, the language, or the category. And one of the most important um, information is at the right corner, um, the link to the download page of the data. And um, there you are taken to the, to the data access side. Um, this is one of the um, last graphics. Um, this overview shows which metadata have already been harvested successfully in green and which, which one caused difficulties in yellow and red. And um, yes, um, the metadata from GFZ, BEF, and NASA have already been imported successfully and also covers uh, large parts of the ERG services, as you can see in the table on the right side. Um, yes, and difficulties appeared with the waiting formats or missing transformations. For example, the access via DOIs from the data side website or the import of station side logs, which are mostly written in GeoDA CML, um, does not work. Um, metadata have also been found for the um, for the PSMSL service and the IES service, but um, they are only available as an HTML format, and it would it would be nice if this metadata could be provided as in an XML format, for example. Um, yes, um, this leads me to my summary. Um, in conclusion, it can be said that Geo Network is a very good option for a geodetic metadata portal. It focuses on geospatial data. And yes, there are good harvesting methods. And um, one of the biggest challenges of the harvesting process will be the different standards and schemas. And um, yes, this. This is also a big problem by some of the meta metadata from the IAG service. And this leads me to my last slide. Um, I have prepared some recommendations for data provider. Um, the, there are three scenarios. And the first and recommended way is to create metadata um, in a machine readable format um, by yourself. It's very important to provide an XML or JSON format in combination with one of the listed interfaces or a download facility. facility. And uh, the already mentioned problem with the um, um, correct metadata standard is um, or should also be considered, like in the box on the right side, you can see this. And um, the second um, way is to create and use DOIs, the, um, which can serve as a unique identifier of geodetic products and data. And then um, metadata can be imported um, via access from the data side website. And the last um, option is the creation of metadata directly in the Chigos Badar. This um, could be an option for data provider which haven't um, made uh, metadata available until now. Um, yes, I will thank you for your attention. Lena, thank you very much for your nice presentation. So other questions to Lena or Martin, yeah. Thanks, Lena, for the very nice presentation. Um, could you go back because it's easier to understand. Um, so I think providing recommendations for 
is important at this step. And if I look at the overview you had before, where you had like C3DIS and the other that are not providing machine actionable metadata, I think this is just a matter of making the data centers aware of, because there is a clear recommendation to provide machine XML or like, and I know CDDIS is doing UI, so why not putting things in the metadata? And for the strategy to query XMLs via data site, we have to be aware of different um, contents of the metadata provided to data site. There are still, unfortunately, data centers who are not providing more than the absolute minimum of metadata. And you, by harvesting them, you don't even get a spatial domain information. So we always have to make people aware, please use the option to go via data site, but include much more information to enable data discovery via the DUI metadata, which is exactly what we are aiming at, at with the DUI committee. But this is something that, that raises, that we need to make people aware of. So, yeah. And the last question is, um, you said uh, accommodation for different standards is a, is a challenge with both programs. I know that it's spe specifically difficult for GeoNetwork because I have tried it myself and I thought, okay, it's. Um, I then decided that we rather build our own system. Um, I know for CCAN, um, although they started off with using only ISO 1 and 115 or the 13, um, but they, there are mappings also to include data sites. Metadata. So if before you, you got stuck in, they, to accommodate for your for your standards data side definitely there's no 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 way out and I can give you a contact where you can get the, the implementation the mapping that you can directly think. Okay.